So last night we did a live stream over on Twitch, and after a couple hours of unsuccessful red deer hunting, we decided to switch to Layton and do a whitetail run, and had undoubtedly my best stream kill ever. I think I'm recording. What in the world? I'm not going to fast travel, even though I could fast travel right in front of him, because I think he's going to end up stopping. Where did that come from? Dude, that's insane. He's going to stop right there. Oh my goodness. He's up to 313. That's a diamond. I'm pretty sure. What's the math on that? He's plus 35. He should be 278. He's in the same areas where my albino diamond was. Are you kidding me? I saw that piebald come running out of there. And I just had a heart attack when I saw the size of the antlers. That is truly a big male. Oh my goodness. Just, where was he hiding back in there? And by the way, somebody just asked me how I haven't gotten a great one yet. Um, I have to say that because this is also being recorded. What are the chances of killing two rare diamonds before a great one? It cannot be much better than getting a great one. Holy, thank you for the sub, Elk Slayer. I appreciate you, man. I can't even believe that. 278.5. 97 kilo, level 3, piebald diamond whitetail. The multi-mount we're going to have. We're going to have an albino diamond, a piebald diamond. I hope eventually we can get a melanistic, but, you know, even still we have another pretty good sized piebald that I guess we'll put in there. New multi-mount, we're going to have to. The grind has paid off. I can't even believe that. And only because I went running over there to go claim those other deer. That's unreal, guys. So yeah, uh, inspired by that, we're back on Layton for another whitetail run. And I'll tell you, that really got my motivation back to continue grinding whitetail and continue working for a great one. Because how cool of a multi-mount could we have? A diamond albino, a diamond piebald, and a great one? Or... Honestly, I don't even know now, because we have the Diamond Albino and the Diamond Piebald fighting in the Trophy Lodge, and that looks really cool, and we'll take a look at that at the end of the video here, but... Yeah, I just... I can't believe we have another rare diamond out of this grinding session. And you guys have been asking me, like, if I was going to do my Whitetail kind of guide video, and the setup guide I did for Red Deer over on Quattro Kalinas was meant to be, like, a guide for how to set up on Layton, and I'll try to show, like, my spots a little more in-depth as we go along through this video, if you do want to see where I'm doing this. But the entire point of the setup guide was to make it where you could do it on any map, so, like, basically, what I did for Layton was I ran around, found all the drink zones, set up tents and tripods, and I do the exact same thing I did on Quadro, but, yeah. One thing I will say, I have this tent way over here, and I run this section to this zone, and it's just to let all the whitetail move into their zone, so we've been doing that. We're almost to this first zone, and we'll get started with our little whitetail run. So, since this video is probably going to be pretty long anyway, since I'm still kind of doing a bit of a guide for how I'm doing my whitetail hunts, I try to take my time to explain stuff. So, this first whitetail zone here, which it says jackrabbit because I spotted jackrabbits there, but it is a whitetail zone. Quite consistently, I don't seem to have whitetail here. So, whether it's me showing up too early, or maybe sometimes they drink back in the brush further, I'm not really sure. But that's a spot I actually don't worry about too much, so if I don't see any there, I do just fast travel to my first spot up here in... Actually, it's not quite in Calburn, it's technically a part of High Lake, I guess. But, yeah, it's this little spot here on the map, and like I said, I'll try to make my spots a little more clear just so you can see where I'm going on the map. But you do have very limited time for a white drink time, so I'm also going to be moving relatively quickly. But, two bucks out there. And I don't feel like I need to do a whole lot of explaining, like the entire process basically tent set up tripod set up and i'm just gonna go hop in the tripod and take my shots so i think we only have the two and of course the m1 is going to be the best way to uh get both of those quickly since the follow-up shots are so good with this but we're gonna shoot this guy first just because the follow-up shot on that dude since he was more broadside is just gonna be a little bit easier and we'll go and claim those, and actually, my other spot up here in Calburn, it was up here, but I don't get Whitetail there anymore, so we're actually heading straight down into Norden after this. But I talked a ton in these setup guide videos about, like, adapting your setups, because neither of these lakes down in Norden actually had Whitetail for me when I initially started doing the grinding. I did check them, 
but as I shot Whitetail and like as I just talked about, this zone up here doesn't get any Whitetail in it anymore. Other zones appeared with Whitetail in it, and that's something you do need to do like if you're trying to grind for Whitetail or whatever you're after. Be willing to go and check new spots after you've already found all your zones or think you found all your zones, because you do get new ones. But last time, when we did this live on Twitch, and it seems to be the case again, not a ton of deer were actually over here, but a couple of bucks once again, so I think we can probably shoot two. There's a little bit of leftover pressure because we actually shot them without being in the tripod, but I think we're going to be okay to shoot them both. And of course we want to shoot the max weight estimate one first. And get that guy as well. So this is actually a spot, and I can't promise we'll see any, but I have a whitetail drink zone down at this little lake here as well. And again, I'll zoom out so you can see where I'm at on the map. But sometimes, if I'm lucky, I can get a bonus buck or two just by kind of running up to claim these and looking across the lake through this little area. So first, pretty decent one. 87 kilos is well into that max weight range. And Oh, okay. I was going to say, this guy should have been a gold, but we lost the vital check bonus. Now, I have a tripod set up right up here. Because I can look down through here and shoot the deer in that zone that I was talking about, if they're there. The issue is, it depends on where they drink at, because sometimes they're a little bit too close to my tripod and they spook. Sometimes they don't actually hear the shots, but it looks like in this particular case, they are not down there, so they probably spooked. But usually, it seems like they path right through there, so I picked up their tracks on the way up through here. And the heaviest one was 70 to 85, so I don't think we're missing out on anything on this one. And we'll have to just make sure we get those next time, but... Next lake is this little skinny one down here in Norden. And it's maybe my biggest hit or miss lake on the entire setup. Either there's like five or six whitetail just in this little opening right here, or there's nothing. And it looks like there's nothing here, which we're going to lose out on a couple of kills, but it does speed up the process. So we're heading down into Chila, the lake that most people call the Mushroom Lake. And good to see the whitetail are back over here, because yesterday I got a new drink zone. We'll see if it's still there. Yeah. It says blacktail now, but yesterday I got a whitetail drink zone over in that corner, which was a little bit weird, but they're much easier to shoot over on this right side. But I think, yeah, it's just those two little ones. So, did he start running before? We didn't even hit him. I guess he took off before I got my shot in there, but I always pretty much try to shoot either the bigger one first or the one that's further away first, because you get more time for potential shots at the fleeing one that's closer. But in that case, the bigger one happened to be the one that was farther away. So we'll grab the two of them, and then we have another adaptation from the last time I really did a video on this. This lake here in Southern Ridge did have whitetail, and it was pretty good for me for a long time, but it did completely stop spawning whitetail. I never get them anymore. So I took my tent from there and moved it elsewhere, but Belmont Lake does still spawn whitetail, and I gotta check and see if I have room for one more tent on this map, because maybe I could speed up my run a little bit by placing a tent down here instead of running from the outpost. I'll have to actually look, that might be something I should adapt as well. But yeah, the thing with Balmont Lake, if you're trying to uh, actually use these spots to set up your own map, I had three different whitetail zones across this lake. I had the one here where my tripod is, and I had two more around the other end, but for whatever reason, those stopped getting bucks, I only get those over there. So I don't actually go over there anymore because, I mean, there's there's no real point for me to go check. I checked it over and over, tried to shoot the does, and nothing happened. Like, I don't get bucks there anymore. But if you are setting up your own map, make sure you check around the entire lake because I know there are multiple places where whitetail can spawn. But again, we're going to go with the biggest one first. And that's probably the second biggest. There's at least one other buck but they actually run quite nicely. I think I shot him in the vertebrae, to be honest, but I think he's the last one. I actually hit him again, so... That'll speed up the uh, tracking process a little. But that's one of those zones that I keep discovering it randomly every time I spot this doe. So I'm wondering if that has anything to do with the fact that I don't get bucks there anymore. Like, it seems like the zone doesn't stay on my map. But yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a weird deal, but... Another decent buck, 87 kilos again. And fortunately, this guy didn't actually go all that far either. So now we actually head to the spot where the piebald diamond was killed. And that is down here in the Leighton Lake Shore area. And it's right where the road actually crosses coming from Balmont Railroad. So 
I have two whitetail zones here, and I've shot three piebald whitetails down here now, which maybe that's just really stupid luck, but it does actually make me wonder. So I do have one zone over here by the bridge, but it really rarely spawns bucks anymore. Though one of the last ones to spawn there was actually one of the piebalds we killed. And then this zone down here is where I shot the piebald diamond, and I believe they're hiding right now. A lot of times they actually aren't out in the open, but I think... I do see a deer there. So I guess we'll scoot over there super quick, and what I'm going to do is try to get to within 200 meters of them and start hitting the call and get them to come out into the open just so I can shoot them as quickly as possible. And I'll probably only shoot one buck just so I don't cause extra hunting pressure there. But, yeah, now I'm actually able to see them a little better. There's decent antlers on that guy. So I think we'll just get him just to try to speed this process up because... Already to begin with, I can't get to all my spots, like, within Whitetail drink time, so they stop drinking in right about 20 real-life minutes, and I'm just not going to get to all the areas I still want to go to in that amount of time, so that was the first decent buck I saw. We'll take him, and we'll move on, but this is actually exactly how that five-ball diamond showed up at the beginning of the video. We shot two deer over here. I ran over here to claim them, and he came running out of that zone past me, and we shot him right over in there, so... You can see they don't always do that. Sometimes they just continue back through here. So we got really lucky that he did that. And the fact that it was on stream was really cool. But yeah, that guy was actually in the max weight estimate, 86 kilos. And we're going to head to the bridge down here in Renaki. So I have a tent right on it because it just makes it so much easier to check this spot. There is a zone for me back behind the bridge. A lot of times on a lot of maps, there are whitetail zones down in here. And I used to have one there, but they actually seem to move over into that area but it still makes it easy to check this spot and sometimes like that doe is doing they are still just walking over for whatever reason but it seems that is our only buck down there so we'll just take him for a respawn and the only kind of negative to the spot is it's a little bit of a run to get down and around there to claim stuff but as much of a pain as this spot can be just to get down and around to claim and all that stuff, this is where my albino diamond was, so would certainly say it's worth checking. And super quick, I am going to grab a tripod out of my inventory because I need one, because uh, I gotta move one of the ones that I have set up and I forgot to do that, so just so we can do that a little more quickly. So this spot here, just a little bit northeast of the uh, Runaki outpost, probably is gonna be the most difficult one so far. I saw a little level two buck back in there, which I just can't see from here. So we're probably gonna try to get that one and that one first, and maybe we can get the two on the run, but I'm always going to shoot the one more in the brush first. And then, if I can find him, a little far back, but that'll work. And we'll get that guy. I don't know where I hit that. That was a little bit lucky, I won't lie. But that actually went about as well as it could have. Something actually maybe worth doing is switching to the Hyperion scope for this, because the zoom of the Argus does make kind of like locating the fleeing targets or even the targets like right after I take a shot a lot more difficult. I'm just so used to the Argus. I don't know. That's probably going to be something I do on my next run just to see if that actually helps me out a little bit. But something I've been doing uh, is actually leaving the space for like a tripod or a tent. So we just picked up that tripod at the outpost when we were back there. And the main reason is it just makes it a little easier for me to adjust my setups without having to like ditch inventory in the middle of doing one of the runs, but I actually want to see, because I felt like I was too high and too far back for this, but the blood kind of says otherwise. Okay, it was kind of high and far back, but just happened to get into a lung, but we're going to head up through Mount Kraken area to this tent, and this is where I need my new tripod. So we have another 85 to 100 buck here. We had one of those on stream last night, but... We killed that, so that is a new respawn. And I'm going to kill him without the use of a tripod. And I'm actually going to set up that new tripod here. Uh, if I put it into my inventory, I'm going to do that. Because the tripod I have, it was originally set up for zones that were kind of... I don't know, there were, there were two zones close together, but the one zone stopped spawning away till it seemed. Oh, more structures of this type are not allowed. i got to go take that other one down first anyway. The whole point of grabbing it was so that I wouldn't have to come back here. I was going to just set that one up and then grab this one on my way by, but I'm going to have to 
come back to set up the new one anyway. But yeah, another decent one above 85 kilos, so potentially good for respawns. And I gotta head back here and set up the tripod now. Our next spot, actually, I'm gonna steal the tent from because I don't get bucks there anymore either. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that at the Belmont Lake spot I mentioned earlier. So yeah, you can see I get does here still, but no bucks ever respawn, so we have the tent and we'll set that up somewhere else. But if you want to check the spot, it's this little chunk here, it's actually in High Lake, but we are headed up to two new spots up in Winnipeg. We actually set these up during the stream last night. So there's one new little buck back in there. So we'll try to get him super quick and head to the next spot. I was just looking at the time, we might just make it uh, to get all the spots done during the course of the like 45 minutes we get to actually hunt during whitetail drink time but i had like four bucks in this herd when i first found the zone so i'm hoping there's going to be more respawn than just one here usually but two things about this spot up here in willipeg number one is just the location if you want to see where i'm at on the map and number two is the fact that i set up my tent in tripod in such a way that i could get in the tripod shoot my deer and then basically run straight across to where they were drinking at it just makes the process a lot quicker. Rather than having to run like around the water that's over there, I purposely set up so I could literally get out of the tripod and just run straight across because, I mean, time is of the essence when you're doing these whitetail runs. And yeah, just a little guy, but I haven't been back to this spot yet since I found the zone, so we'll see what we got going on here. So no doubt this spot requires a little bit of tweaking. I didn't quite set it up right. I thought this whitetail jackrabbit zone must have been on top of my whitetail zone, but actually the zone I had found had disappeared off the map, so I didn't set up in quite the right spot, but 285 to 100s, decent buck there, and even that guy's not too bad. So in this case, we're probably only going to shoot the 285 to 100s just because I always shoot the deer before I set up my tripod, because the tripod being set up will spook them, and then I'll come back and actually worry about the other ones getting shot from the tripod next time, but tier 2 pressure is not too bad. And I'm trying to see... I'm going to have to figure something out for this spot, because running all the way around there is going to be a bit of a pain to actually do every time, so I may end up taking some long shots and setting the tent up there, just because I'm going to have to go around that other edge to go claim them, but for this case, we'll have the shots being a little bit easier. And I'll probably shoot the... Well, actually, I guess I gotta shoot this one first. But that's gonna be both of them. And yeah, I gotta go all the way around, but I will move my tent just because it's gonna make it a little bit easier for next time, so... Oh, I gotta get something out of my inventory first. New tripods that are in there. Actually, I just realized, because this is so open over here and kind of juts out into the water a good bit, we can set up our tent over here and probably be just fine. I do need some flat ground, I'm hoping this will work. And quickly, I need to swap so I can get my tripods. And just in case you didn't watch the Red Deer uh, setup guide, I always try to keep my tent a good like 180 meters or so from the zone. And I'll put the tripod a little bit closer, but I think a shot from this range shouldn't be an issue. And we have two more spots. This is a late zone if I'm not mistaken, but I can't see the zone up there anymore. Zones disappearing on the map are a big issue right now. That's a late zone. And that is another late zone. So I think we're going to be okay since both of our zones that we still have to go to last till 1530. And that's something to pay attention to for, like, the way you set up your run. Go to spots that the zone ends at 1500 first. That way these late zones you can go to after and still have a little bit of bonus time, kind of, to actually hunt them. So I think we're going to be okay to get to all of our spots in this video. And that's actually quite an improvement from the stream last night. I realized the uh, Piebald Diamond probably slowed us down quite a bit. But we did not make it to all of these spots during Whitetail Drink Time. So glad that we're still able to do that. But where is the other deer? Okay, he's down right there. So the only zone that potentially ends at 1500 is going to be that first one that I couldn't actually see on the map. But we should actually get to see deer there. And I can show you that there is, in fact, a zone up there. But... Just quickly, I guess it didn't show that second spot as well on the map. It's a little bit north of where we just were. And then we're going pretty much all the way north up here into Chopika. And I can see deer already, so definitely there is a zone over here. And that is the biggest buck I've seen here in a while, even though he's not all that big. And you just saw him go to drinking, but I didn't get a new zone. 
I've shown this before, but if you're spotting an animal that's not using a zone and then they start using it, you have to spot them again to get the zone to actually be discovered. So now it's actually on my map and go ahead and pop that guy. Now this spot, you can see I don't have it set up to just run straight across. But the reason is there's actually another zone just south of here. And I haven't had bucks in here for a little while, but I did just recently have a buck respawn. So I believe they still can get them. And yeah, they're kind of back in the brush right now, but I do go over here and check this spot every time, and that basically leads me to the area I can cross right here, so having that uh, tripod not set up where I can run straight across isn't really a big deal. But I certainly don't see any bucks over there, and again, for me the whole thing's about time, so the fact that maybe there is a buck hidden over there in the brush and it would take me a lot longer to go get him, I just find it best to go and claim my buck and move on to the next spot, and then maybe the next run I do, they're going to be standing in a slightly different spot. Because that is a thing with any zone for any animal. They don't always drink or feed or rest in the exact same spot. They may be just, like, say the zone over here where this buck is. Maybe next time they're going to drink here more in the open. Maybe next time they're back in the trees a little bit more. So I just figure eventually maybe it's the next run, maybe it's the one after that. If there is a buck over there, he'll be standing out in the open for one of those. And I can get him on that run just to, like, really optimize my time. I like to kind of put as little extra time into like going and calling animals out of spots or whatever as I can. That one spot down in the Leighton Lakeshore, probably usually I wouldn't worry about that spot, but I did randomly see the deer there and it wasn't too big a deal. But yeah, this guy was almost in the 85 to 100 estimate. He's a 220 gold. And our last spot is yet another new one for me. It's down here at the Runaki Western Outpost. And I have a bit of a weird setup going on for this one. So I need to place another tripod, but... We just found out earlier that I have the limit posted, or uh, placed, I guess I should say. And I'm going to have to go steal one from somewhere else. But the thing that I've been doing for a while now is actually using my duck blind. So I don't ever duck hunt out of here anymore. I set this up a long time ago for just... Actually, I was trying to do a duck hunting video and what I wanted to do wouldn't work. But the blinds for ducks and geese like the layout blinds and these blinds the waterfowls they do reduce the hunting pressure just the same as the tripods and tree stands so i can use that and it's going to be just as good as using the tripod now maybe my visibility is not as good but as far as actually reducing the hunting pressure we cause it's going to be just as effective they usually drink over here and as i was saying they don't always drink in the same place so this might be a bit of a tough one just because of where they are in this particular run. Maybe I'm going to just try to get that guy because I can see him. And we'll see if we can get the 85 to 100 on the run. So just going to try to sort of center him since I can't see. And I think he went down. Pretty sure he did. I don't know if the others are going to actually give me any shot opportunity. Maybe here. Definitely hit him. I think a flesh wound will kill these with the M1. Maybe another hit if we're lucky. But, yeah, kind of a last spot. We might as well try to get those, like, random tough shots. Because it doesn't affect anything to have to track him for longer. Because we're done with this run now. We don't have anywhere else to go. Which is actually why I do this spot last. Because it is a bit of a tough one. And, yeah. If I gotta go track them up through that mountain, it doesn't really affect the rest of my run but we definitely got that first one that actually wasn't half bad considering it was a reasonably blind shot and this guy didn't go anywhere either i think we got a vital hit on that follow-up shot which is reasonably lucky yeah it got right into the left lung so the total number of deer we killed in that run was 21 all bucks of course and it took 46 minutes so you can almost get a deer every two minutes, a buck every two minutes doing the runs this way, and it's really dang effective. Like, obviously, um, <laughs> it's worked really well, and we're gonna go see just how well it's worked in the trophy lodge now, because that is what we started the video off with. So some of the better kills we had from doing the whitetail runs are in this multi-mount, the 232 albino, the 222 piebald, and the 266 piebald in the back there. But then definitely the two best kills are these ones. So we have a 278.8 albino. That guy was actually level 2. And the 278.5 level 3 piebald diamond. I don't know how. Like, I would feel like the chances of getting a great one 
are probably higher than the chance of getting two rare diamonds, but apparently that's what happened, but I actually really like this. Um, I think it's a really cool multi-mount, and I have no idea what I'm going to do now if we ever do get a great one, because my plan was to do the albino diamond and the great one fighting, but now this is so cool, I'm not really sure what to do. So if we ever kill one, there's a good chance I'll actually do a community tab pool to see what you guys think is going to look best, but yeah, for now, that looks really, really awesome, and I don't know. I hope our great one grind takes at least long enough that we get a piebald buck to put in this multi-mount, and then I don't even know <laughs> what to do with uh, with these two, but it's it's really, really neat, and yeah, definitely my best live stream kill ever, but anyway, this video is probably long enough already, so I think that is going to do it, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.